be inspired, informed, and up to date. Tune in to Trax Momentum interview feature of the day at 11:15 a.m. Join us as we speak to our panel of guests on various topics. Health on Trax on Monday, Tuesday Spectrum, Wednesday What Matters. Face to face with our guests on Thursdays and on Friday. Tune in to W Talk. Tracks Momentum Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Only on Tracks FM. Do you want to know more about women empowerment? Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of. Hey, w how's Talk. it going? This is Tracks Momentum with me, Diana, on the Friday edition. Good and morning and welcome to W Talk. Right, Women Talk. At welcome Tracks back to W Talk. It's calling you in the studios of Tracks FM. Tune in to W Talk every Fridays from 11:15 to 11:45 a.m. only on Tracks FM. Absolutely. Good morning and welcome to Tracks Momentum. It's time to speak to our guests at a quarter past 11 this morning. Matron Rohaya Binti Razali, a nursing officer from the University of Malaya Medical Center. International Nurses Day was yesterday. We'd start off by wishing her a happy, happy Nurses Day for yesterday. Happy okay, Nurses thank you, Day. Thank you. And, and how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Fantastic. How was Raya as well? Oh, my Raya was so fantastic because I have I, I get long leave for uh-huh. at least 10 days. 10 days. So I go back early from other people so avoid <laughs> you managed to avoid the jam yes avoid the jam <laughs> oh fantastic where's your hometown Ma, uh, Kelantan Kelantan <laughs> and, and how is everybody in Kelantan everybody <laughs> good help oh, very good very good so Nurses Day International Nurses Day how is that celebrated here in Malaysia oh, normally we celebrate every year with uh, our organisation Malaysian Nurses Association Association mm-hmm. org- organise a uh, uh, one day celebration okay. this year in Hotel Avali, Putrajaya. Okay. So, uh, we, so normally we organize there with some forum, uh, uh, menteri also. Be, uh, right. Then. So that, so be, there'll be some dinner yeah. and and but not all the nurses will be allowed to go. Yeah, for no, sure, no, right? No, Imagine no. if all all the nurses took leave on that day. What's going to happen, right? So who's going to run the hospital? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That's the thing, you know. So yes. it, it, it should be Nurses Appreciation yes. Day, not just Nurses Day. But you know, can you imagine what it's like if if, if we don't have nurses at all, right? I don't think so. If do, we don't have nurses, I think the hospital. It also had mm. closed down. Correct. I mean, we have doctors. Yes, we appreciate yeah. doctors. Uh, yeah. But today we're talking about nurses. All right. So, but you know, the doctors will just walk around. They'll give their diagnosis or whatever it is they'll do, and then they, yeah. you know, the nurses the, are the treatment, ones. But we, the nurses who administer yes. and, and take care of the patient. Take care of the patient. And then you have to listen to all the grumbles and the and the and the nonsense and the. Not right? to say nonsense. Uh, when people mm. sick, you know, they are very fragile. Right. Who's yeah. worse, men or women? Boss also in the boss. <laughs> You're very diplomatic. You're very diplomatic. I, I'll say it for you. I'm sure the men make more fuss than women, right? Yeah. Actually, yes. yeah. Because at home also, when you, you look at it also, the men, like, if they're sick and stuff, they, that's yes. it. They'll yes. be in the chair watching TV. They won't do anything else. But if the lady is sick, she still goes and picks the kids up from school. She still prepares the dinner. And then, you know, she'll if sit. She can do the housework. She can finish all the things. Yeah. How is it you women can do that? Huh? I know. Might be because of the spirit we have. <laughs> 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 women are strong. Women are strong. <laughs> women are absolutely strong, right? Okay, Matron Rohaya Binti Rizali is our guest this morning. Uh, tell us a bit more about yourself, ma'am. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm from Kelantan. I'm the eldest one in my sibling. Uh, I have completed my diploma in nursing, mm-hmm. followed by uh, my post basic in emergency. Mm-hmm. And then later, I do the, I mean, I finish my uh, degree in nursing. Right. And then now, just follow. Oh, why? Why did you choose nursing? I mean, how how did you get started with nursing? Actually, nobody forced me or asked me to uh, join nursing. Uh-huh. Myself, just apply during you, that you, time. You just liked it. Uh, I really like to serve the public. All right. Yeah. Uh, and and if parents want to, you know, when they see their kids, right? What are some of the early uh, the early traits that will tell you, okay, your kid's going to be a nurse someday? You know, what are some? Did you start to play like doctor or nurse when you were young? No, never, never. never. Okay, that's surprising. Never. Yeah, never. Yeah, I've I've played doctor and stuff like that, I've but I've never, never been there. Nurses. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, you mm-hmm. go. We had, you know, the stethoscope open, all yes. that stuff and all that, right? Never- and then we like to put it in the fridge so it's cold. and Because it's, you know, when you go to a doctor's office, it's actually the air condition that makes it Even cold. Even my niece and uh, nephew also don't play with that. Ah. Nurses and doctors think they don't. They don't. Right. No. Maybe times are changing now. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, who or what has been your greatest source of inspiration in choosing nursing as a profession? I mean, the greatest source. Me myself, I think. I the one who, I mean, take the first move, mm-hmm. apply for the job. I mean, during that time we apply for the course, mm-hmm. and then I join nursing. And then once you already in, so you have to, you have to follow and. Once it's already in you, it's mm-hmm. become part of your life already. Right. So uh, you, how long is it? How long is it for you to take a, a nursing or, or before you can be declared a nurse? How long uh, would you have to study? Our or, training and normally training. for three years, three years study. Okay. And after that, we qualify as a qualified nurse mm-hmm. and then we start working. Right. Uh, what's the worst part about, you know, the toughest part when you're doing your training and things? Toughest part is my... The memory that I can't really mm. forget is uh, during my training time when we are posting to we are posted to mortuary. Oh, First time we see okay. that body, right? Then they do post mortem. Uh, that's the worst thing. Oh wow! So there are those who might give up after that. Yeah. Who who will not continue? There is yeah. Yeah. Huh? And and uh, the ones who carry on are, are the stronger ones, and yeah. and that's what's required oh. in nursing, right? Because it's, nursing is really a tough job. And you have to control your emotion. Mm. And that's not the only part you see. I, I, I think there's a lot more that you actually have to, uh, you have to, you know, see, uh, overcome also, right? But yes. never mind. Uh, okay, how did you feel when you initially started as a nurse? At the beginning, I really don't like. I don't like nursing actually. But later, when uh, you work and then you f- face people every day, mm-hmm. you you become. Something that, oh, this job is really noble job. Mm. You have to continue help people, service service the public. Right. Then slowly it built in myself. And I really like, now I like the job. Right. So and it's like you, natural instinct. If you yes, see somebody it's a natural who's, instinct. If somebody is hurt and stuff like that, automatically yeah, you yes. are like a, you're like a mother lion like that. La, you know, mother, mother, mother tiger, tiger. Mother of tiger. <laughs> right. And then you're just like, you know, you have to go and take care of your young, yeah? Yes. Wow. Okay. And there's so many people, so many nurses out there who who go through a lot of things which we don't know about. So today yeah. we'd like to we'd like to find out more, especially like uh, during the pandemic, yes. uh, during COVID nineteen, mm-hmm. and and that must have been a very trying time for you. Yeah, of course. Everyone, not me. Every yeah. nurses, everyone, every nurses in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. I mean, out of the world. So everyone is during pandemic. They really, they really. I mean, stressful, mm-hmm. sad, and then. In fear also, because the disease is something new, disease coming out right. from where we don't know, and then suddenly it's become pandemic. <laughs> right. Become, you know, it's very really difficult to face during that time. Maybe we have to face the situation. Mm-hmm. I mean, the how to manage the, the patient. I mean, COVID patient. This is different. Uh, I mean, we have to wear PPE. Mm-hmm. So wearing PPE is not something that, you know, something good to wear like we wear trousers no it's really if you just imagine if the hospital doesn't I mean not on aircon fully aircon it's really hot mm. and it's and hot. it's hard to breathe and all that yes, inside it because you have to wear the mask 24 hours if you are inside the uh, clinical area right I'm sure that the first few who had to go through it was was even worse because we didn't know what to expect. Yes, so they took all the precautions. It. Yes, of course. Right. But during the the early of uh, COVID, you know, every day we see death. Every day, every shift, mm. there is a death. You see somebody dying. Yeah. And that's awful, isn't it? Yes. So you feel how the nurses feel. Then after that, they have to go back. I mean, to take care of their family. But in the war, so they're very stressful. Hmm. I really, really salute the audiences. Yes, yes. And, and we have many listeners as well who are always, you know, until today, uh, they still say, you know, uh, hats off to our frontliners and, and all the nurses. And then we're talking about people like you. 
and and uh, okay, we're gonna go and take a short break over here, ma'am. Okay. And then we'll be back in a bit from now. We want to ask you more about all kinds of things that nurses have to go through that we don't know of. And perhaps okay. when we understand what nurses have to go through, we'll be we'll be able to appreciate nurses a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Matron Rohaya Binti Razali is our guest this morning. She's a nursing officer, University of Malaya Medical Center. We're talking to her on Tracks Momentum. Online from the traffic in Kuala Lumpur. Feast your ears to soothing music on your favorite station. Trax FM 90.3 Kuala Lumpur. Our guest in the studios of Trax FM is Matron Rahaya Binti Razali, Nursing Officer, University of Malaya Medical Center. We take this opportunity once again to wish all nurses in the country and outside of the country, all around the world, Happy Nurses Day. Yeah, thank, thank you so you. much for all that you do all the time. Uh, yes, and especially when you're talking about death. And, and, you know, sometimes you get close to a patient and after that, all of a sudden something happens and the patient doesn't make it. Uh, how do you deal with that? I mean, sometimes it involves our feeling also. We feel bad because we look after the patient for quite some time and later we lost him or her. So it's really, we feel sad actually. And, mm-hmm. and, but anyway, it's our job, so we have to face it. We have to be strong. We have to continue our work. Right. And we just go on with our life. Uh, are nurses provided with psychological, uh, what do you call yeah, that? Yes, uh, we do have the training for the psychological. Right. And, and you have people to talk to also in yes, case of all yes. that. Yeah. Right. Yes. It's, it's horrible. I think it's absolutely horrible. I don't think anybody like, like somebody like me can, can just go through that. You have to prepare your mentally, really prepare your mental. Mm. And, and sometimes people think like this nurse, you know, they complain, right? We become very, how do you say it, manja? Yes. Yeah, when I mean, we're, we're, we're nurses, nurse, nurse. And we think like we're the only person who's sick in that hospital. Yeah, right sometimes we get, get irritating. But when, yeah. we, when we think back, it's, it's, it's normal for sick people. Of course, they want to, something to look after them. I mean, more, I mean, want somebody to stay closer to them. Mm-hmm. So that's why we, we keep, they keep calling us. But later, when we when you already in the nursing for quite some time, you know, I mean, slowly, slowly, you learn how to take care of the patient, how right. to how to love them, because it's our patient. Mm. Just, uh, just what we say, just uh, think that they are also part of our family. Mm, that's we a nice. Treat, that's a nice treat, thing to do. We treat them as part of our fam- family, right. so that we, yeah, they so. they should be treated well. Right. So that's why we treat them as as good as we can. Mm. Mm. I, I've been in hospital before and, and I've had like, the, you know, the, some of the nicest nurses. And, and I wrote a little card and said thank you and stuff. Yeah, they, we appreciate when people right? give our card, I mean, give card to us. Mm. It's really all, oh, there's, th- there's someone outside there also uh, think that nurses is somebody that that's right. it's, give it, a good it, service to, the, to them. It matters, yeah. Please, yeah, listeners, please take the time to, to write a note to your nurse. I mean, it doesn't have to be that, uh, oh, I was in hospital last year, it's too long already. Even now, if you write. Yeah, people change. Right? People change. You, you yes. can write a letter and just say thank you so much and, and stuff like that. It matters to them. It, it inspires them, right? Yes. To carry on the motivation. Yes. Because you're, you're surrounded by people who are sick and then you're surrounded by people who do not, sometimes do not make it and, and they, they, they move on yeah. and then you know you have to go through all that and then you know sometimes we get people who complain 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 okay. complain complain of course they will right I mean, no like, more people yeah that- like like some you know like women who go and, and deliver babies they say oh the nurses here are very rough uh, they don't care and i talk to them but i personally think you know in cases like that some of the nurses they're so used to it they see people being born every day yeah and then like you know like you're sometimes making a fuss for nothing you're the much of, like like me, so every day we see a uh, patient dying. So the emotion is something that a uh, patient die. Oh, it's okay. Mm. You know? But because we're seeing dying, dying cases every day, mm-hmm. so the feeling, I mean, the emotion towards, towards the dead people, we have the emotion, but we can manage, we can manage and hide the emotion, the sadness emotion to... From other people see our face, can right. So we can hide the emotion. It's not so that least, you, it's not that you don't care. Isn't yeah, it? it's not we don't care, but we try mm. to show people that we are strong. If we are weak, then what did the other patients say? Yeah. How come the nurses also like that? Yeah. Then we are all six. Then she look after us. 
isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like yes. you you were saying during COVID, you you watched a lot of people just yes. die every yes. day, every day, and every shift. And towards the end of COVID, was I mean when when things were getting better, uh, how was the mood then for nurses? Well, no, I really feel good, feel oh, wow, COVID gone already. Mm. But it's really not. I mean, it's not hundred percent. That's gone. right. That's right. But but the percentage, I mean, the. People who get COVID now is not in the category five, four or five. So mm-hmm. most of them are category one and two. They are just have mild symptoms. So right. I, our ICU also not that not that full as before. So we think, wow, it's really we feel really, really, really. Mm. And, and it's a celebration for you all yeah. when you see people survive, yeah. right? Yes. And, and you make it and, and all that. Sometimes you think the patient's not going to make it, and then they do make it. Yeah. And and. That's like wonderful news that for you. Is really, we feel wow, patient survive. At least patient survive. Mm. There's few patient COVID survive after a uh, few episodes of uh, resuscitation, but at last they survive. Right. The but we feel happy for the family. Right. And something, some. I mean, COVID is disease that side out, out of sudden came in our world. We mm-hmm. don't know from where, how, and then. It's really, it's really hurt everyone it, because of the COVID. That's right, and yeah. and one of the things I, I where I consider to you uh, nurses to be v- big heroes is you have to go home and then when you see your family, you don't know if you're carrying uh, yes. the disease over to your family. And I'm sure, you know, it has happened to some nurses, right? Yes, yes. And okay. and we do know of some nurses who actually lost their lives as well. Yeah. Right? Yes. And and uh, it's so sad. I mean, even for us who are not nurses, but we, we can't imagine what it's like to be you who see your fellow teammates or your fellow, uh, you know, nurses have to... Okay, you know. we feel sad, you know, because when... Uh, it's a story of a friend of mine. Suddenly, she get COVID, but really bad. And she really... I I talk to her every day. I call her every day just to give more, more support because she's very down and she's so sad. She's afraid of, am I going to die after this? She's got no, you have to be strong. You have to be strong. At least she managed to come up from the mm. uh, situation. Right. And now she's well already. Right. Mm. She's much better now, yes. yeah? Oh, that's good. Well, okay. How different... Um, how different is the is the public re- reaction to nurses now than it was back then? I mean, like back then, is it is there a difference back then? How were they towards yeah. nurses, and now has it improved or has it gone gotten worse? Actually, back then, public reaction back then, because they think nurses is just uh, someone who assists the doctor, but now the nowadays, public more aware that the nurses are very skillful. They can do. Anything and they are they are what really have their uh, specialties and they can manage to look after the patient and I mean with collaboration with the doctor so they manage to uh, I mean to do well in their job and then the public also now can see there's a difference between those days and these distances. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I love you doctors, but you know, I whenever I get an injection, I want the nurse to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Why you want the nurse to do it? <laughs> because, because, you know, the nurses are more gentle. They're more gentle and they're more yeah. caring and they come in there and they, you know, like, hi, yeah. Mr. Hi, Green, have to, how are yeah. you? You know? Uh-huh. The doctors say, I'm giving you five millimeter of... Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But nurses, we have, the way, we have a way how to... Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, talk to patient. That's why before we do something, we have to talk to them, right? And tell them what we're going to do. Yeah. So that patient, patient, uh, patient not, uh, patient not in uh, shock. Right. And suddenly, out of sudden, someone jab you. Mm. So, I, I was very naughty, you know. There was one. There was once when I was in hospital for, I think about more than more than a week. I was in, in there for about ten days or so. And then when I when I <laughs> I was so bored, so I started walking around the hospital. And then I ended up at the taxi stand in front. And and there were some people who were there. They were drivers of some other people who were patients. Uh-huh. And we were having a chit chat. So they were telling me we were talking about all kinds of things. And then this nurse who was looking after me passed by in the car, and she screamed at me, "Mr. Green, get back to your ward!" <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay. Now, uh, can you share with us uh, some of your experiences as a nurse? What, what are some of the fond memories? What are some of the, the bad memories? Well, the uh, fond memories. Huh? Bad memories during my... I was working in ED. Where, where is that, sorry? Emergency department. Okay. There's one case. Uh, one patient came in with a cut injury at throat. It's really... Oh, cut injury at throat and then we do resuscitation send patient to OT and last uh, patient survive right yeah, last patient survive but that's a pretty scary thing to see yeah, right yes, uh, because resuscitation we almost I uh, mean involved with resuscitation every day so that one is normal for us already mm-hmm. but this thing is really I can see pa- that patient stride already the next dangling just left oh my around goodness. one cm or uh, one inch or two inch like that. Wow. The the throat. Wow. But at last, finally, we managed to save the patient. Patient survived and patient can talk. Right, and you have to wow. Okay, and still able to talk after yeah, that. Patient still able to talk after that. Wow, and oh, well, that's a scary thing to yeah, go through. Yeah, that's huh? scary, but it's mm. a. I mean, it's a. Happy ending for mm-hmm. us because patients survive. Right. You know? and, and it's things that go on on a daily basis for nurses, right? Yeah, and and we're not really talking about nurses. being in a war zone yet. What about nurses who have to go through being in a war zone, right? We never go to the war zone unless... Oh, I I got one experience. So during that time, there's a uh, fight in Kampu Medan. Mm-hmm. It's a light of war zone. Right. We receive almost, I mean, 20 or 30 patients with bad injuries slash wounds. Mm. That one is really chaotic night. Oh. I was working night. I, I was on night duty during that time. Mm-hmm. Wow, it's really chaotic. Blood is everywhere on the floor. Ouch. So we managed to send patient to OT. Mm. Later, I mean, later we managed to to control the situation. Right. It always looks very, very nice and dandy and, you know, everything like in Nurses Day. Yeah. And then yeah. we see pictures of nurses smiling, holding the file. You know, it's like we, we only think of nurses like, you know, like that. And then go and give some antibiotics and swallow, take a pill, you know, and stuff. But, but oh. it's really when you, when, you warded, when you were in the ward, so you can see. When mm-hmm. you've been warded, then you can see what nurses do. Right. So it, it's a, it, you're a different kind of person. Yeah. You're a different kind of person than a lot of us out there. And, and you're a very brave person. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to play a song. And when we come back, uh, I'd like you to inspire or to tell, uh, you know, anybody who might be interested in becoming a nurse, uh, yeah. what is really required in them for okay. them to become a nurse. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Our guest this morning in the studios of Trax FM. We'll be back at a quarter. Do you in, in a want bit to from know now. more about women empowerment? Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition. Hey, how's it going? This is Tracks Momentum with me, Diana, on the Friday edition. Good morning and welcome to W Talk. Right, Women Talk. Welcome back to W Talk. It's Kong Yu in the studios of Tracks FM. Tune in to W Talk every Fridays from 11.15 to 11.45 a.m. only on Tracks FM. Our guest in the studios this morning is Matron Rohaya Binti Razali, nursing officer, University of Malaya Medical Center. She's seen a lot, and uh, we need to understand that there's so much nurses have got to go through, and, and they're a different breed of people. They're not the kind of people like uh, if you're not somebody who's cut out for the job, I don't think you'll, you'll be able to be a nurse, right? Yeah. And and many times, like I said earlier, we, we think uh, nurses have got you know, simple things to do. Doctor will tell you what to do, and then you come over. No, and no, you, no. You, now there's no more. There's so many things that you have to do out there that we don't know of, yeah? Yeah. Uh, what else do you do that we don't know of? I mean, like nurses have got to go through. We do a lot of things. I mean, uh, we look after the patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes we have to deal with the family member also. Yeah. Because, I uh, know, uh, when your father or your mother been admitted, of course you, you, you worry at home. Because of the pandemic, you cannot come and visit the patient. Mm-hmm. So every day, the family member keep calling us, ask for the patient condition. So sometimes, there's, there's a quarrel so between I mean, right. nurses and family members because yes. they, they can't visit the, their, their loved one. Mm-hmm. So we have to manage all the compl- conflict. 
I'm very happy to know that, you know, nurses are actually aware and they always try to put them, themselves in our shoes, yeah. uh, the patient's we shoes. We try, yeah, we try and, our best. Right? And, I, I, you know, I have to admit, a lot of people normally, like patients sometimes, we can be selfish because we don't know what's going on. We don't try and put ourselves in a nurse's shoe. Yes. We don't think that, you know, uh, this nurse, probably she had bad news herself. Maybe maybe she's from her house. Maybe she yes. had a problem at home. Uh, maybe she's got a sick kid herself, or maybe she's got a sick but relative. We, but when we come to work, we have to cover. We have to pretend like we have no problem at all. And you don't deal with one patient alone. Yes, no. How many patients would a nurse have to deal with uh, I roughly? Mean, uh, roughly one one nurse we look after six patients. But sometimes we, when we have shortage of staff, mm-hmm. so we go to an, uh, until eight or ten wow. patients per one nurse. Right. So, so you know, patient, yeah. So patients like you and I, uh, Catherine, you included, when we go to hospital, we, tr- we try and put ourselves in their shoes for a little bit before we open our mouth and, yes. and start grumbling, right? Sometimes we think like, oh, nurse, you know, you're supposed to give me this one at what time? And you don't give me this one at what time? We try, we try to, give, to give the best service to the patient. Mm, that's so good to know, really. Really good to know. Uh, matron, how, what is it? Uh, how did you get to be a matron? Uh, what are the stages of being a, a nurse and w- when do you become a matron? Well, I became a matron uh, year 2016. Mm-hmm. 2016, yeah. So first Before this, uh, after graduate, graduated, I've been a normal nurse. Okay. And then for at least for 20 years, I think. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then I become a nurse manager, a nurse ward manager. Then after that only, we apply for the uh, nursing officer post. Right, mm-hmm. right. So so, so uh, how long, how, how many years? I mean, of course, if you're outstanding, you become a matron faster and stuff, yes, I suppose, yes, right? Yes, but, yeah. but for you, it took you uh, how many years because to become a matron? In the beginning, I don't want to be in the management mm. side. Right. So the, I, never, I never go for interview or what else. Right. Later, I got support. I mean, my boss asked me to uh, try, mm-hmm. and then I keep thinking, oh, for how long I'm going to be a normal nurse? Right. So I, I should upgrade myself. So that's why I apply for the uh, nursing officer job. Right. So yeah. now you're an abnormal nurse. Yeah, not <laughs> abnormal, but now my my I I do more in up in, on administrative side. Administrative yeah. side, right? Uh-huh. Oh, lovely. Okay. And and what do you have to say to to uh, nurses who who might be uh, or aspiring nurses, people who want to become nurses? Okay, for them who want to be a nurse. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to be more confident. You have to be more patient. And dedicated, and also have to be uh, a critical thinking person. Mm. Because when you join nursing, you have, you have to analyze, you have to evaluate, and you have to make a correct judgment for the patient. Right. Uh. So, so like somebody like you, if you're traveling on the road and you see a small accident on the side of the road, your natural instinct is yeah. stop the car. Yes. I want to go and help. So, right. We have the feeling you want to stop the car, but sometimes yes. you know the, the you, road you're is not, You cannot. Correct. Stop yeah. The car. You will become the or patient. At least, we yeah. we call the ambulance. Mm. So it's a natural instinct that yeah, that you get, right? Instinct. So so we celebrated International Nurses Day on the twelfth of May with yeah. the theme "Nurses: A Voice to Lead." Invest in nursing and respect rights to secure global health. What what do you think of the theme? And maybe you can talk about it a bit. Uh, for me, this year the theme is to demonstrate the need to the patient nurses' right in order uh, to transform health system. To meet the uh, to meet the needs of uh, individuals and communities, communities now and in the future. So for me, and it also promote our uh, nursing work and fight for nurses. So I think the team is very important for mm-hmm. nurses, benefit and care of the nurses also. They are the backbone of an organization. So we need to care to give good care for the nurses. Right, yeah. and and uh, uh, they're not only female nurses; they're also male nurses. Yes, also male nurses. Right, and and a lot of times we think of of a nurse, we only think of a you know. I mean, you mentioned nurse, you expect to see when lady walking in, anyone guy walks in, you're like, where's the nurse? I am the nurse, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and, and some of these guys are fantastic. I tell you, I've yeah, I've yeah. met. Yeah, I've been in hospital enough. Uh, yeah, I've had lots of accidents. Some of the males are good. <laughs> right? Yeah, yes, yes. They are male. They are good. Yes, correct. Except yes. the one that stitched my head a long time ago with the glass still inside. Anyway. 
<laughs> okay, that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> so did you I, remove the, the class? There, there, was a, there was a little bit of the windscreen inside uh, still, you know? Yeah, um, I suppose it was, you know, you're trying to get the job done fast yes, because of no, bleeding. No, we have to remove the glass first before we do this. Yeah, <laughs> somebody made a mistake there. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, like this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so how do you normally celebrate International Nurses Day? So, like, we, we have an International Nurses Day celebration mm -hmm. by our organisation, Malaysian Nurses Association, every year. Then in my organisation, we do celebrate, but later, after the, after, mm. on the 12th. After 12th. After, after 12th, after 12, after right. 12th, yeah. And and what do you do and all that stuff? Really, I mean, you chill, right? Yes, like, we chill. You don't want to think have about... Sem seminar and forum and also some... I mean, music also there. Like, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, will there be any special program organized to mark the celebration this year? Yes, yes there will yes. be, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah, like we were saying earlier, do you have any advice? You told them to be strong yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Any messages you'd like to, to pass on to the nurses and, and uh, or to the doctors? Do you think doctors are, are, do doctors behave well or do doctors need to be told something? <laughs> doctors, of course, doctors behave well. Sometimes, I mean, people, some people also make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But for the nurses, happy nurses day to all the nurses and not too late for me to say uh, Selamat Hari Raya. Selamat Hari Raya, okay. yes. And thank you for your hard work mm -hmm. and uh, be excellent nurses. That's right. And, and you know, we had, to, uh, how many years we didn't get to go back to Balik Kampong? Huh? And, uh, then, yes. and then some of the nurses still didn't Balik Kampong because yes, they still yes, have, to, have work. to work. And we really appreciate but we you. have to take turn. Yes. Not everybody can get leave on Hari Raya. Correct, okay. correct. And, and to those who stayed behind to have to work and stuff, we know the sacrifices you're going through. Uh, yes. we, we really thank you for that. And, and for the management who got it all upside down for in some cases, but not just nurses, but for other people as well. Uh, you know, next year, please don't make a mistake. Make sure, <laughs> yeah, make make sure. sure you know, yes. Sure. <laughs> yes, you know, we've heard horrible stories of, of, of some people not getting a salary before Hari Raya and all yeah, that kind of, of things. Course. So, you know, please make sure you, you take care of, of anybody who's having a celebration. Doesn't yeah, matter, not just Hari Raya, yes. whatever celebration. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being thank here. You, thank you and, for uh, inviting me. There you go. Matron Rohaya Binti Razali, Nursing Officer, University of Malaya Medical Center. Uh, International Nurses Day was yesterday. Appreciate nurses, ladies and gentlemen, listeners of Trax FM, and thank you so much. Yeah, welcome. We look forward to seeing you again, but not in the hospital, yeah? Yeah, outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay.